Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, a free way to support the channel is by leaving a thumbs up, by leaving a comment, telling me what you had for breakfast and what you plan on doing later on in the day or what you plan on having for dinner, and or subscribing if you have not already because it does indeed help with the algorithms. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. The news of the day was that Bitcoin had dropped in price and then subsequently had popped back up in price from where it had previously fallen. I think Bitcoin fell to $29,300 something or other. Apparently, immediately, we bounced right back above two thirty thousand US dollars. I think we're currently at $30,900, somewhere around that area. Uh, I looked right before I started making the video. So what's quite fascinating is, is that one would assume that normally the Bitcoin price movement news tends to be the uh, news of the day. However, that's a big no-no because uh, the cryptocurrency space is never boring. Even, even when we have periods where we're going completely sideways, the news outside of price is always just a little manic and kind of going completely insane. When we did have situations in 2018 where the price would just trend sideways for like six, seven months. So the news being for price news is that Bitcoin dropped and then Bitcoin has gone back up. We are still not back at the illustrious 40 to $42,000 per Bitcoin, but at some point we will eventually get there again. The news of the day actually has to do with a couple of other things. So I know you have, I know I have, I've seen this news around for the last couple of weeks. I didn't really pay a lot of attention to it because it just didn't seem like something that I would actually care about. Last night, a friend of mine messaged me and he was like, hey, have you seen everything that's been going on with GameStop? And I was like, I heard it's like money. And he was like, no, you need to really look into exactly what happened. So I messaged my other friend in Florida and I was like, hey, GameStop question mark. We proceeded to have about a good six hour long conversation with voice messages and basically us flailing our hands back and forth in the air as we spoke about exactly what was going on. So for I'm going to try and give you the actual quickest rundown that I can possibly so that you can be brought up to speed as to exactly everything that's been taking place. GameStop is a company that appears to be on its last legs. And this is mainly because there are people play video games online. People download video games directly. If you don't have a PS4, or PS5, or an Xbox something or other, or a Switchy Twitch, uh, you can just download games directly from the internet. So not many people are actually physically going to stores. There were a couple of companies, hedge funds, who realized or assumed that this meant the end for GameStop and many other companies, which we're also going to talk about in the next couple of seconds. What ended up happening was is that these companies started to short GameStop stock, essentially saying, uh, we expect it to go to a really low price, and this is when we're going to buy in, and basically betting against the markets. You can long or short something. Basically, if you're shorting against it, you're kind of betting against it. You're saying, it's done, it's garbage, it's going to go down to a certain price. What happened was, is on Twitter, some people found out about this. And basically, I don't know if it was a joke. I'm not exactly sure what triggered it, what started it. I haven't read the actual uh, threads, if you will. And people were like, hey, you know what? Let's start buying up GameStop stock. And the price, I think, went from like $1 to like $8 or something like that. Like just with the power of people who were on Twitter. The stock, the stock started rising. At some point, the stock ends up going up to like $17, and everyone's like, okay, it's had a good ride, but the price, you know, is now going to fall. And when you started digging deeper, I watched so many videos about it. I, I don't know if you can tell my energy right now. I watched so many videos about this last night. What happened was, is this is like the fourth time I've said what happened was, is people realized that there were mega hedge funds behind the scenes who were betting on the drop. And... When you actually <clears throat> short against something, if the price, if it doesn't go where you wanted it to go, you end up losing a huge amount of money. I can't remember the name of this one. Is it, is it like Miller, Willer, Diller, Wilson, something like that. Some type of, it, it must say it somewhere around here in the actual article. This hedge fund, it was calculated on Twitter as well and many other places that every single time that GameStop stock went up, 
This company was losing billions of dollars. Not hundreds, not thousands, not millions. They were losing billions. And someone calculated if GameStop stock that they that this company shorted, they expected this company ex- expected to make billions of dollars from shorting that from it's called GME is, is, is the letters of the actual stock. By, 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 by shorting GME, that every single time that the price rose, this company was losing more and more money, and it created a tidal wave of people who were like, in no uncertain terms, excuse my French, F them, let's push as much money as we can into GameStop. The price skyrocketed. I think it, it went up by over like 1,000 something percent over the course of the last day, 40 hours or something like that. And it turns out that there were multiple hedge funds who had huge short positions on this stock, expecting it to collapse. Now these hedge funds have collapsed. They're gone. They're completely wiped out. They've actually gone to the government to ask for a bailout. Even more so. Here's the really crazy part. You now have regulators. You now have hedge funds. You now have CEOs People on CNBC all discussing if this was fair. Why did these people have this information on Reddit? Was this insider trading? Should we arrest them? Should we find them? Should they be persecuted? The answer to all these things, my friends, is no. It is a free, open market. People in politics and people in finance have made sure that they are able to do as they wish on any market at any given time. Even regulation doesn't really make any sense because these people actually help to make the regulatory rules. They give money to the regulators and say, this is what we're going to do and this is now legal. That's how it works. These companies assumed they could do whatever they wanted in the market and by the power of just Reddit, it was a couple thousand people, and I think it ended up being 15,000 people in total, and, you know, that one mass, were able to destroy two hedge funds. This is legal. These people, oh my gosh, on CNBC, they were discussing, they were saying, do, do you think it's right? Do you think it's right that people are able to download an app on their phone? They were talking about Robinhood and, and to be able to trade any, any stocks that they want at any time. Can you imagine the audacity of someone saying out loud, this person, and these people were furious. If you have a chance, go onto YouTube, you're here right now, but you know what I'm talking about, and type in GameStop, oh gosh, I I think just GameStop in general, you'll definitely find it. Find any videos from the past 24 to 36 hours of them discussing uh, the whole fiasco, like you'll see it on, on, on your TV or screen or whatever it says, like posted six hours ago, posted 12 hours ago, posted 18 hours ago. Watch these videos. You can actually see the steam and heat rising from their heads because they are so angry. It never entered into their minds that normal every day. And they made sure to say the word retail retail. Once again, means poor people. For those of you who don't get that, we, we, we spoke about that the other day as well. The S&P 500 stands for standards and pours. There are actual things in the market where people are designating. Listen, stop it. They didn't think that normal people would know what shorting was, what longing was, and that they simply did not have the power to be able to move anything in the market. These people on Reddit destroyed these hedge funds who I'm sure have been shorting and probably are... Listen, hedge funds have been known before in the past to completely wipe out companies and or acquire. Listen, there's a a reason why you short something. If you are a major multi-billion dollar hedge fund, you short something to let other companies know, hey, we're the big dogs in the space. We're going to be shorting that. If you don't short it, you're going to lose. Everyone begins to short and bet against it. The stock completely crumbles. You know what usually ends up happening for certain hedge funds is they usually end up a couple months later striking a deal with that company who they destroyed to buy them up. And then they remake it, re-energize it, and then the company ends up flourishing again. And they go, yeah, you know, we, uh, we saw a really big opportunity and we took it. These people were discussing on CNBC locking up, finding the people who started this. They were, they, you should have seen them. The, the, uh, how dare you as a poor person, how dare you as a normal, everyday, average Joe think 
that you can make money in our market. There are, of course, news reports of people who threw in, you know, they, they were like, you know, fudge it. Threw in some of their life savings and stuff like that. These people made half a million dollars, a million dollars just from GameStop alone. And now they're, of course, in the news talking about, yeah, you know, I randomly made a bet. You know, I'm a millionaire now. And then the hedge fund completely collapsed. They're ask- the hedge funds are asking for bailouts. Can you imagine when normal people lose their job, when normal people lose their homes, when normal people lost everything last year and also this year because the, the, the situation's continuing? When were people ever able to go, hey, can you please give me a bailout or just give me any money in general? I don't need a $1,200 check. I need a $600 check. I need actual money to be able to feed my family. And these people went on TV and said, how dare these normal people? So now they're talking about being able to restrict normal people from using or buying stocks, downloading apps. They want more information. What They were saying, why didn't the regulators step in more? For who? For, for, for Because people realized that they could download an app buy into something and bet against a hedge fund. How how dare you as a poor person think that you can outdo us? So there are multiple hedge funds who are wiped away. But the news is that two of the major ones are gone. Like they are completely, they're not even a thing anymore. They're asking for bailouts because they actually can't do it anymore. This news is crazy. Me and my friend were discussing for hours. Do you understand what would happen overnight if people understood that you can do the exact same thing in the cryptocurrency market? If you had a bunch of, because a lot of this is is friction about millennials and boomers. I hate the term boomers. I really can't stand it. But it, it's this idea that young people basically have nothing. The older generation kind of has everything. They were able, You were able to buy a home for $5,000 that wasn't dilapidated. That was an actual beautiful, lovely house. That generation took us off the gold standard. That generation got us into all these situations. That generation allowed university to start costing money because it used to be free, same across all over the place. They started all these systems that basically screwed over people who are living now and even people who are who are going to be born, they're going to be they're being born into the worst system in all of eternity that we've ever ever had. So how dare these young people who know nothing about finance get into the market? Do you understand how crazy you have to be to be angry because someone realized that you were rigging markets and they simply bet against you? It's an open, free market. This is what the law says. It's for everyone. As long as you, at the end of the year, declare your taxes, as long as you, you know, if you are starting or creating something that is a security, you go to the CFTC. If you are trading commodities, you go to the CFTC. Wonderful. All legal. That you could go and tell people, we need to find a way to stop people from trading on Robinhood. It's, it's, it's not fair that they can just simply download an app. If this energy that pushed GameStop, first of all, it's not even GameStop. It's GameStop, Bed Bath & Beyond. It's AMC Movie Theaters. It's all these companies that all these hedge funds were shorting, just knowing that they were going to obliterate them. And I'm certain that many of them planned on acquiring these companies as well after the obliteration. These hedge funds got wiped out, completely wiped out because all these stocks are surging. But it's just that GameStop is the actual biggest surge right now. It's crazy. I can't even remember everything that was happening. I sat there watching it, and I thought it was a parody at first. There was a guy, he was like, I'm not going to use the word uh, atrocious or atrocity, but it definitely, you know, this doesn't seem fair. What exactly doesn't seem fair about it? When I talk about why I need, my body needs normal everyday people to know about Bitcoin, it's because of this. When we keep getting news for months, months, months that rich people are buying up all the Bitcoin, what do you think is going to happen? They are going to become even wealthier. What happens if normal people start buying Bitcoin the same exact way that they did the GameStop stock? 
what happens to normal everyday people? They become worth more. They become worth six figures. They become worth a million. I this this entire thing is absolutely insane. From 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 top to bottom, like there's no actual way of even slightly getting around this. Anyway, um, got a bit off track. I don't even think I did because it's all relevant. The democratization and the digital the decentralization, if you will, of finance. The fact that people are able to now download apps. You can download Exodus. You can download Coinbase. You can download Robinhood. And be able to enter finance at will? How dare you? How dare you think that you can do that? How dare you think that you can download a Bitcoin wallet and enter the world's economy? You can't do that. We told you that before. We told you that you are under sanctions. We create the rules and we tell you exactly when you can and cannot move your money. How dare you? Do you understand why Bitcoin is an actual threat to the establishment? Do you understand why it's so powerful that everyone on the planet is able to get into this? There are no restrictions regardless of what you hear. You can download something on your phone and buy into a new world currency. This has never, ever, ever, ever happened before. And I was, I've chatted with a lot of people about this topic. What I think is going to happen is we are going to see a cascade of things like this across the entirety of finance. This is not going to end. When the saga of GameStop, Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC Theaters, and I think there's like two other companies, when that saga ends, people are going to start finding what other hedge funds are also shorting these companies, and they're going to start buying that stock. This guy on TV yesterday, he made sure to note, he was like, yeah, we're not shorting anything. He's like, you know, it's, it's, it's a scary time to be in finance because we can't short anything. Because you're so used to being able to control every single aspect. Can you imagine being surprised that normal people got into your market? Even, I, I, and, and I've mentioned this before in tons of other videos. If you have not already, try and watch financial news for about a good 30 minutes. You're going to sit there and be very confused. They use these terms and things that you don't understand on purpose. It's meant to keep you away. You can, you, can, you, you can look this up. There's a reason why they don't say bet against, but they say go short. There's a reason why they talk about securities or commodities. Because you sit there and you go, I don't know what any of these words are, but they're talking so fast, you don't know what they're talking about, so you change the channel. It's meant for a certain group of people. Why did you think I went crazy when I was like, the, the leaked news that we got, I'm sorry for screaming, the leaked news that we got from JP Morgan Chase and these other banks that had sent it to their wealthiest clients, that Bitcoin could hit $300,000 this year? Do you understand why that's significant now? Because it wasn't meant for you. They think you're poor. They think you're terrible. You have no need to be in the market. It's meant for institutions. It's meant for the rich. What are you talking about? This isn't a poor asset class. How dare you try and get inside of it? There's a reason why JP Morgan Chase didn't post that on the front of their website so that every single person who clicked, every single person who was sending $25 to their grandmother on the other side of the world didn't read that. It was for a very specific elite group of people, the people who don't want you to be into their system. Think of all the stories that we've had of people who got into crypto years and years ago. And and I mean, it goes as far as Bitcoin, Litecoin, XRP. It can be any of these coins. And the people who actually made money, the everyday normal people. There was a guy somewhere in Sweden. This was years and years ago. I remember reading this story and it like really kind of sparked me getting into crypto. Because this guy had put pennies, pennies into the market, whatever he had. He, he, I think he said his girlfriend like broke up with him. She was like, you're a loser. You're not going anywhere, yada, yada, yada. And I think a couple weeks later, the price of Bitcoin spiked up. He, he managed to pull his money out of the market. This dude bought his own apartment, bought his own car. He like legit bought his own apartment. And, then, and a couple of days later, apparently his girlfriend was like, hey, can you, you know, hey, can I come back? He said no to her, but it's like this. It makes normal people have money, things that they did not have before. If I get any inkling, you don't understand the video that I'm going to make. If I get any inkling that something on Reddit like this is going to happen for Bitcoin, I'm going to lose my mind. It's going to invigorate me in ways. You think I'm excited now? For the, People always ask, am I on something? No, I don't do any of that. Do I drink coffee? No, I only drink tea and water. This is pure adrenaline. This is how I am every single day. So, 
my gosh, like how dare you say that people should not be able to, they, they were calling on regulators to stop this. Stop these people from getting into the market. What are you doing? Why weren't, why weren't regulators stopping this? They want to go through Reddit and figure out the people who said, hey, let's buy up this stock. Hey, let's do something legal that we're able to do. You know that after you're legally able to download, let's download that and buy that stock. Ma madness, absolute, complete and utter madness. They were talking about even halting trading. The, 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 the stock market or the trading of certain stock got stopped multiple times. Every time, because the, the, the idea is, if things are getting too hot, that they can stop it. So that it'll scare people. Why is it not working? Why is it not working? And then the market will drop and go back to where it should be. And at that point, then the shorts, you know, are doing just fine. The market crumbles and collapses. They kept on stopping it, starting it, and then the price kept on going back up and they did not know what to do. If you haven't, if you haven't watched the news on this, please do, do this today, if nothing else. It says NASDAQ CEO says they may halt trading in case of increased social media chatter following GME stock fiasco. They were saying that if they get any indications that this is going to happen again, they're going to start stopping the trading of certain stocks. What happened to the open and, f open and fair free market? What happened to that? Is it only open and fair when it's for the wealthy? When the wealthy are making tons of money, there's no stopping them. There are probably around 15,000 people on Twitter or any other platform where this chatter was happening who made around six figures and they are elated. I have no job. I have no so-and-so. I need to feed my family, friends, and kids. And now they have money. How dare you? How dare you as a poor, normal person try to make money? We're going to start halting trading so that the stock can fall to where it should be. Because after all of this, now this is speculation, but this is you know logical speculation in line of everything else. We're going to assume that these hedge funds, the ones who got obliterated, probably had trades from other companies within the actual stock market as well. They were all chained and linked together. So when they fell, the other ones who had that same exact position also lost hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. Why would you need to halt something? This, is, this goes back to the same exact conversation we were having before about a particular website. Remember every single time when Bitcoin kept on going up, that one website kept on going down? And then what happened? Bitcoin's price dropped. And they went, sorry, we didn't mean to do it. And then by the fifth time, Oh, so, it's our computers. They're still not. They're still not updated. Sorry, guys. We'll get it. And then by the eleventh time, oh, the computers again. It keeps happening. The system is rigged, and the fact that people figured out that it was rigged and simply did something that was legal. Now we have to stop them. Now, dude, we we can't let them run amok and you know uh, buy up our short positions. That's, that's bad for the economy. Where, where are the regulators? Why haven't the regulators stepped in? For what? For what? For what? One of the people on CNBC, and he's, he's definitely in the uh, shorting side. He said, we've, t we've spoken with a number of our you know, clients and CEOs and yada, yada. And they, they, you know, they all agreed that we definitely need the regulators to step in here. And he was like, one of the really weird things is that on, on our social media page, people keep saying, Step in for what? And he's like, you know, we, 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 we can't allow things like this to happen. We, 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 we can't allow people to realize that a company is shorting something. The reason we have shorts is because longs exist. Do you know why we have Bitcoin futures? Type in Bitcoin futures 2017 um, tame market. We had news in 2018 and 2019, like actual real news, that people were afraid in, in government and in finance were afraid and annoyed and kind of shocked that Bitcoin's price kept on going up. There were, there were no, uh, what's it called? There were no plans to activate or launch any type of Bitcoin futures in the Bitcoin market. Bitcoin's price was going up so high, so they launched the markets to be able to allow people to short Bitcoin and bet against Bitcoin. 
That's why we kept on getting news for two years that every single time that there were shorts in Bitcoin that we had to fill that gap. Why did we have to fill the gap? Why did we have to fall back down to where rich people said that we had to go? And then remember that one, no, it was like three or four miraculous times where the, the futures ended and Bitcoin didn't fall down and everyone's like, what? What do you mean we didn't fill the gap? Those futures are traded in US dollars. What does a future on the CME have to do with Bitcoin trading in Bitcoin? This is insane. Do you understand what's taking place in front of our eyes? There are companies now who are making sure that they don't take short positions because they will be wiped out. There are hedge funds who've made billions of dollars off the backs of people losing money. The game was, there are people who are going to be buying this stock in expectation of it going up. We're going to short it and say that it's going to fall down to this level. Everyone else in finance follow suit or you're going to get burned. The normal people who bought that stock were supposed to have been wiped out. The game runs in their favor. Whenever we get news that someone's buying up 35,000 Bitcoin, I sit there and I grind my teeth because I'm like, why aren't normal people paying attention to this? Why is no one getting it through their heads what's happening? Banks around the world, not just one bank, around the world sent out letters to their biggest clients. We foresee the US dollar dropping by 20%. It looks like Bitcoin could go to $300,000 this year. And the next two years, Bitcoin looks like it could hit $600,000. And then the next day, this company spent $45 million. This company spent $100 million. This company bought 45,000 Bitcoin. And everyone goes, well, Bitcoin's price dropped by 2%, so it means nothing. What do you think is happening in the world right now? Why do you think so many people are going long on Bitcoin? Why do you think this information isn't made public? Why do you think that regulators are now coming forward and being like, hey, we need, to, we need to regulate this. We need to slow down. Because they know that companies, institutions, banks, pension funds, the richest families on the planet are betting against the US dollar and are buying up Bitcoin. What happens when all the remaining Bitcoin that there is is purchased by normal people, people who are not supposed to have access to it? What do you think happens to Bitcoin's price? And what do you think happens to these new people who got into the market? They become the new rich. They become the new wealthiest people on the planet. This drove me crazy yesterday. Because we are on the cusp. We are on the precipice of something absolutely monumentally amazing for human history. Oh my gosh. You you don't even understand what this all actually means. The fact that people figured out that they have the power to be able to wipe out entire companies in a month. That's a lot of power. And those were just the people on Reddit. What happens when everyone gets together? You know what? Listen. It's sitting right here. You can't see the tab. It says Wall Street Bets chairman tweet has sent Dogecoin soaring by 85% in a couple of hours. I saw this, not that I thought it was a joke, but lo and behold, it actually happened. People are now trying to do exactly what they did for GameStop to Dogecoin. Before in the past, for those of you who may simply not have been here during uh, that video, that time, there was a day when Elon Musk tweeted the word Dogecoin and it rose by 130%. Imagine what happens if these same exact people, GameStop was a dollar and I think it rose to like 326 the last time I saw the actual price. Imagine being able to rise Dogecoin to a dollar, a dollar 20 cents. Do you understand what this all... It's Oh my gosh, dude, this is crazy. So as it stands right now, Dogecoin is pumping. Um, let's see where this ends up going. Because I think you could do really great things with this. 
people need to realize that they are the ones with the power. It's it's while the wealthy, yes, they do, wealthy people do indeed have power, but collectively, if we all come together, we can change the entire world, and that's something that really needs to be forced into people's heads. Anyway, um, that's gonna do it for that portion of the video. <laughs> I'm fired up completely and utterly. And let's move on. David Tice, a longtime Wall Street bear and Bitcoin holder, has argued that the flagship cryptocurrency cannot be ignored. At a time in which he predicts the stock market will crash and endure a 30% downturn that will last for two years. Tice, during an interview with CNBC, said he expects the stock market to crash over business unfriendly policies from Washington after pointing out the Biden administration's influence. Um, basically, what's happening is we're getting a lot of calls for a stock market crash once again. Apparently, the market has been showing signs for weeks now that it's it's not even overbought, that it's just completely overextended to the point where none of the numbers actually even make sense. And this is an indicator that we could be seeing a crash. Um, the stimulus checks have gone out and they've done nothing really spectacular to the stock market. Uh, and we know for a fact, at least right now, that there are going to be other checks that are going to be coming out and the US dollar's value is going to continue to be depleted. Um, on the same breath of this entire uh, GameStop thing that's been happening, the amount of people who are calling for a long on Bitcoin or for Bitcoin to start going back up or for Bitcoin to do all these amazing things during a stock, even not even during a stock market crash. The stock market crashes are actually being predicted right now saying the market can't do any more. We had news and indications. This isn't a tinfoil hat thing. We know this happened. Trillions of dollars were printed to be pushed into the markets. We saw this all last year together. The Fed lowered their rate to 0%, trying to get people to take out debt. No one took out debt. Trillions of dollars were printed and were pushed into securities and in bonds to keep the market afloat. That's why the market is up right now. The market should basically be at 10% of where it currently is because no one's really buying these things. You have hedge funds who are shorting, trying to make money any way that they possibly can for their higher upper clients who are like, make me money. Find, find me a way to make money in the market. So that was David Tice. Star fund manager Catherine Wood is touting Bitcoin strength as a hedge against inflation. In an interview with Yahoo Finance, the CEO of ARK Invest says she expects Bitcoin to continue to outperform gold. She said, I believe there is no better hedge against inflation than Bitcoin. As we know, gold has been moving, although now it's lagging Bitcoin fairly dramatically. So there's probably some share shift, but I that I do believe that both of them will do well over time. The calls that we keep getting for the US dollar to fall, for Bitcoin to outperform gold, every single day, companies, I don't have to say it, rich people are buying what? What are rich people buying every single day? What are rich people buying all of every single day? 88,000 trades in one day to acquire $600 million in Bitcoin. What are they buying every single day? What are they betting on? I swear to goodness. If Bitcoin goes to 100K and people aren't into Bitcoin, it's going to drive me mad. Because 100K calls for Bitcoin, I don't even know if I have it actually in, in this video, maybe I had it in another one. There were a couple of analysts who came forward on different channels at different times, basically all stating that when, 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 when Bitcoin hits $2 trillion in market cap, that's a $100,000 Bitcoin, they expect a flood of ETFs to hit the market. And all these ETFs are going to start buying up Bitcoin to actually have in their fund. When Bitcoin hits 100000 so, um, yeah, it's an intense video. I didn't even know it was going to be this intense. I really thought we'd kind of like roll over the news and just continue on. I want normal people to understand that you 
can accomplish anything when you're together. I know it sounds cheesy. I know it sounds kumbaya y, but it's the honest truth. People on Reddit wiped out billion dollar hedge funds in a month, completely wiped them out. Imagine what else we can do for the world, for finance. It's just about people realizing that we can do it. They, these companies were stating on TV, we're not going to be shorting anything because they were afraid that people were going to find what they were shorting and completely buy up that stock and obliterate that company. You know what that means to obliterate a hedge fund and then the hedge fund has to ask for a bailout? We have no money. Please give us some money. You you just had $50 billion, I know, but you know times are hard. You know, can you Can you help me out? They do things that normal people are not allowed to do. They launder tons and tons of money through banking systems and they get a slap on the wrist. You have to, you got to pay $14 million as your fine. All right, that's fine. No, we'll just do it again next week. All right, you get another fine. Imagine being able to change the world. Imagine realizing you have that power and then using it. Anyway, that's the... Uh, I hope people are paying attention news and when Bitcoin goes up to 100,000, I hope that at least all of my listeners um, paid attention. Let's move on. In the news today, the Emergo or the Ergo Foundation, okay, that's something different. Ergo Foundation, who is Emergo and IOHK have announced Age USD a stablecoin protocol based on the Ergo blockchain. Based, according to Roman Perlin, the CTO of IOHK, the crypto-backed algorithmic stablecoin will also be available on Cardano once his smart contract functionality is unlocked. So the news being, uh, Cardano is going to have, I believe, its first stablecoin that's going to be partially, at least, built on top of it. Kind of cool. It increases the transactions, the amount of value that is on the actual network, and yada, yada. There's so many stablecoins. I don't know, you know... If we had three of them, I'm like, okay, well, you know, this is cl clearly the winner. But we, I think we have over 200 different stable coins right now. So I assume people within the Cardano sphere, block, whatever this is I'm doing with my hands, um, will be using this coin. So that's cool. Wonderful. I assume we're going to have more of them pop up as well because we had indications before that people plan on building more projects on Cardano and on top of Tron and other things like that. So cool. I'm glad for them. I hope they have many more coins built on top of them because that boosted Ethereum's price. Let's move on. <sighs> Union Square Ventures said it will invest roughly 30% of its $250 million 2021 core fund into crypto-related investments as it has with other recent funds. The venture capitalist Firm known for bets on Twitter, Tumblr, and Coinbase said in a blog post written by managing partner Andy Weissman that planned crypto-related investments will include holding tokens directly. I'm, I'm looking at you. Holding tokens directly <clears throat> as equity in early-stage blockchain-related projects. So, I didn't have to read anymore. You get it. Another mega company is allocating... Eight sixteen twenty four eighty million dollars into crypto, or sorry, crypto related investments, and they plan on holding the tokens uh, themselves. I wonder which coins they're going to be holding. Hmm. It's a big question mark over my head, but you know maybe we'll figure it out eventually because it seems like you know they're all buying something, but I can't figure out what. Anyway, that's the rich people buying more crypto news, and let's move on. In news, that's nonsense because it won't go anywhere. News, after many years of indifference, there was there was a lot of uh, non-indifference. The Reserve Bank of India is now considering the use of a digital fiat currency for the payment sector in the country. Wow. Shocked I am. A report said, this is coming on the backdrop of the increasing popularity of cryptocurrencies globally. Hmm. Maybe they're all tied together. Maybe, maybe the rise in crypto prices... And people using decentralized protocols. No, 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 no. That's ridiculous. That would, they would never do that. Many mainstream organizations, 
that hitherto despised Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies now yearn for investments in digital assets. There are currently over $3 billion worth of Bitcoin on corporate balance sheets, and more of them are being acquired daily. This has raised a lot of concern among governments of many countries just like India. India was one of the many countries who came out and said cryptocurrencies were terrible, they're horrible, don't touch them, you can't use them. The Reserve Bank of India said it's banned, nobody can touch it. And then two years later, the government said, oh, they were lying the whole time you could have used crypto. These people thought that cryptocurrencies were a fad. They are used to the idea of being able to print money at will, when they want, how they want. They destroy currencies and they create new ones. You don't have a choice, so you have to keep using it. That's how the system goes. And when they see the information that people are betting against the U.S. dollar, what did I say many times before? What happens if the world's reserve currency falls? What happens to the other currencies that are nowhere near it, that were already crumbling, that were looking for a foothold on a piece of ice? They crumble as well. What happens when banks are telling their richest clients the U.S. dollar is going to fall and Bitcoin is going to skyrocket? What happens when these companies start buying up massive amounts of Bitcoin in anticipation of a stock market crash and the U.S. dollar being obliterated? What do governments do? They panic. The IMF told us what they tell us last week. Crypto needs to be regulated. What happened at Davos? It was basically a Bitcoin bashing bonanza where they kept on saying Bitcoin needs to stop. Bitcoin needs to so. Bitcoin needs to so and so. The old system is crumbling before our very eyes. I'm not sure if it was accelerated because of 19. I'm not sure, you know, it could be a multitude of things. It could be that the US dollar you know, keeps losing value every single year and they've been trying desperately to try and get another world reserve currency and they could not do so. So the news is, <clears throat> and the reason why it won't do anything is because they're going to digitize their already crappy money. And I don't mean just India's money is, is, is crappy. I mean all fiat currencies, they're all garbage. They keep losing value more and more every year. This is why we have inflation. This is why you always have less buying power than you did the year before. It's because of inflation. It's because they're used to being able to print money at will and push it into markets and say the market's good now. Everyone can continue with their daily activities. But you can't say that because we know it's a lie. <laughs> we know outright. We saw the, vi I posted the video on my Twitter, this was weeks ago, where the, the head of the people in the United States who print money the guy was asking him, do you just simply hit a button and print it? He was like, yeah. So what happens when they digitize it? Do you think there's going to be better economic policies? No. It's going to be the same crap. It's actually going to be a little bit worse. So um, the news is this is now the ninth country this month, at least, uh, who has come forward talking about that they're going to be digitizing their currency or they're going to be making a digital payment system or whatever. Sure, we will still be able to see how these currencies, digital or paper, are going to be devalued by themselves next to the value of Bitcoin when we hit $100,000 per Bitcoin. And here's the actual uh, newsy majaggers thing right here from the Economic Times. RBI exploring need for cryptocurrency as digital payments rise. Fantastic. Fan, fan freaking tastic. Next up, uh, this was news, and I'm not really sure why it's news, but it was quite popular news. Publicly traded Chinese gaming company The Nine, or NCTY, announced an agreement to buy 26,000 Bitcoin ASICs miners as part of its plan to launch a cryptocurrency mining initiative. <clears throat> so I get it, but as, you know, we've seen this all happen before. So the news basically being that another company is going to be getting into the cryptocurrency mining game, fun zone, not really sure. Once again, uh, 900 Bitcoin created per day. I'm going to assume 
that this company is not simply mining Bitcoin to sell it off. They are probably also going long because they're buying machines that were expensive <clears throat> that force you to have a long position. And once again, PayPal alone is buying up all the new minted Bitcoin per day, per day, per day, per day, per day. I don't know how many different ways I could say it and how many different tones, just so everyone gets that. Anyway, cool. Another company gonna be minting those coins and not selling them off. And to finish things off, Google searches for Bitcoin in Argentina have surged skyward in the past few months. I wonder why. Data from the search engine giant shows it follows Bitcoin's price rise from under $4,000 to over $41,000 in the past year but outperform searches in other countries. Keep it up. I hope it continues. I want these people to be a gigantic Reddit themselves. And I want them to realize that they can acquire this, its value can go up, and that they can be the new richest people on the planet. These countries are being destroyed by people in power. Because these people in power just continue printing money that goes into their pockets. They do nothing for their citizens over and over and over. And this will continue for as long as we allow it to. Imagine having a system that runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, has no downtime, is immutable. It cannot be muted. It cannot be censored and is usable by every single person on the planet. How great a system like that would be if only we had one. You get it? As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Professor Wally from Gunbite University quoted Biddy, Bare Bones Mining, Troy Allgood, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Crypto Stahl, George Montoya, Wiselink, Not TMI, Conan, Don't Skip Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolik Banan, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Oscar Maldonado, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Joshua Vineyard, Martin Stoyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Moher Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Knight Owl, 242 to the World, Bank Roll Network, Crypto Artist, Cole D 3 d Damien Setsuna, Richie Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Garner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller Hitch Test Every Day, <clears throat> and Kyle Skips Leg Day. Yes to Crypto, Bodie McBoatface, Anytime Fitness, Monks Corner Staff, Arf Medic 17, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to all the new Patreon members. Incredibly much. I keep seeing new ones every single day. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel who clicked the little join button below. Thank you to everyone who is a clicker of affiliate links. Thank you to everyone who left a thumbs up. Thank you to everyone who left a smile. Tell me what you're having for breakfast or simply watching until now. It does all help with the algorithms. At the moment, Bitcoin is currently at 31,392 US dollars. It is up by 0.31%. We had a lot of dips over the last day. The markets are insane around the world. It's not just crypto. It's all the markets at once. They've all completely lost their minds. Polkadot is up by nearly 4%. Chainlink is up by 9%. Binance Coin is up by 3 Lumens is up by 3 Aave is up by 4 Uniswap is now coin number 16. Is up by 4%. Tezos is up by 5 What else is there? Ba -da -ba -ba -da. Here we go. Dogecoin is currently up by 54%. <clears throat> Here's the spike. Here's the drop down. Here's the re-rising. Apparently, this is now the new spoken about thing on uh, Twitter and the interwebs. I dare ask, how high do you think it could go? I looked at it. Its circulating supply is $128 billion. I feel like in some weird instance, if we get proper momentum... 
we could probably hit a 10 cent Dogecoin. We could probably even hit 50 cents completely and totally honestly. If we, if you have enough momentum to rise a stock from a dollar to 300 something dollars, I think anything's possible within the cryptocurrency space. I do hope that you all enjoyed. I am worn out. I do hope you all are having a great day, <clears throat> a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you. <laughs>